Hello, I hope you liked the mini documentary on the pret a house. During this lesson, I will recapitulate how the approach of the smart bi and bioclimatic design was used in the redesign of the terraced house. As you may have picked up, pret a was a submission of the TU Delft team to the Solar Decathlon competition in 2014 in Versailles. The competition between 20 university teams was held in a part of the gardens of Louis XIV, the Sun King. Very appropriate. In contrast with other teams, our students decided to come up with a plan to solve a much more urgent problem than designing a new house. Refurbishing an old one, which represents 1.4 million dwellings in the Netherlands, the typical terraced row house. For the design process, we started with an analysis of the local climate. Here you see the temperature map of the Netherlands. On the right you see the differences during the 12 months of the year. And this is the location of Honselers Dijk, where our original house is situated. What can we learn from this? The annual mean temperature is only 10 degrees Celsius. People typically want an indoor temperature of around 21 degrees, so the climate actually is too cold by 11 degrees. So most of the year, even with climate change, it is important to capture the sun and to preserve the heat by thermal insulation. It also means that the soil's temperature will fluctuate only limitedly around 10 to 11 degrees and that you can use the soil for pre-cooling in summertime and for preheating in winter. Later we will see how that is done. Here we see the climate map for precipitation in the Netherlands, with the location of our house and again with monthly differences on the right. Our house receives 850 millimeters of precipitation, mostly rain. The house has a roof of 50 square meters. This means a total amount of 42.5 cubic meters of water will run off. This is equal to what is currently used for the toilet and garden. A no-brainer, especially if you know that we now use high quality drinking water for these purposes. Looking at the wind map and pattern, we see that the coastal region of the house has very strong winds. 6 meters per second on average, which is 21.6 kilometers an hour or 30 miles per hour. This seems like a good business case for wind turbines, which is true, but in this part of the country there is a lot of horticulture, among which no big turbines are allowed. And smaller urban turbines are relatively expensive for what they produce. Solar panels are more effective. So let's have a look at the sun. You already know this sun chart from a previous lesson. Good to know that the solar intensity on a horizontal plane in this part of the world is around 140 watts per square meter, which is exactly 1000 kilowatt hours of solar energy. So the total amount of passive solar energy, for instance through one square meter of glass roof, is also 1000 kilowatt hours. If we produced hot water through a solar collector, the yield would be approximately 450 kilowatt hours. And if we use photovoltaics, PV, around 150 kilowatt hours of electricity would be generated in a year's time. Now looking at the chart, this is the orientation of the garden of our house. And this is the street side. This means that if we want to do something with solar heat, we should use the garden side. Okay, I think we know enough now to start to look at the retrofit proposal. This is a section of the original house from 1960. It has a timber flamed floors and roof slabs next to non-insulated cavity wall of sand limestone on the inside and masonry on the outside. The windows have single glazing. In the first step, reduce, we added post insulation to the house. Internal roof insulation and ground floor insulation were the easiest parts. For a thickly insulated northwestern facade, we knocked out the outer gable wall and added 20 centimeters of vapor permeable insulation and covered the exterior with brick, brick slips, as you've seen. On the southeastern facade, the cavity of the wall was filled with vapor permeable insulation. As another measure of step one, we replaced the single glazing by the best insulating double glazed windows. And we introduced daylight catching solar tubes. Now, this was a more complicated step of our redesign. Here you see how fresh air is let in through pipes in the underground, taking on the stable temperature of the soil before it enters the house. A heat exchanger establishes a maximum heat recovery from exhaust air. Going even further, step three, 
The generation of renewable energy can be divided into electricity and heat, both linked to the most radical intervention we did, the greenhouse. The structure of this greenhouse contains solar cells in between two glass panes, the power station of the house. But the greenhouse also captures solar heat, which rises and forms the source of heat for an adi adiabatic cooling uh, collector between the original roof and the greenhouse, which extracts the heat, and cools down the air and solar cells, and transports it to a hot water tank, where a heat pump boosts the temperature to 55 degrees Celsius. This hot water can be used for the radiator heating and for showering. The greenhouse and roof are also used for rainwater collection, which is stored in a tank under the extension. This water is used for toilet flushing and watering the plants. And talking about plants, the student team also wanted to demonstrate how a dwelling like this could contribute to biodiversity in the neighborhood. They did so by adding a green hoof roof to the northwest, introducing plant species suited for the local climate in the front and back garden, and by proposing the growth of herbs, fruit and vegetables, also in the greenhouse. So this is what the pret loger house looked like during the competition in Versailles. As you can see, we mocked slicing through the neighbors, allowing visitors to see the differences between the original section and the retrofitted dwelling in the middle. It won several prizes and can be called the most sustainable terraced house in the world. You may have seen that the house was rebuilt on the TU Delft campus and now still serves as a demonstration object, as a living lab. I hope this film clarified the decisions taken for the particular terraced house, which turned into the home in with a skin. See you next time.